Eagles is back, the Daredevil pilot, back with some more hair-raising stunts. You can see some of them a bit later on. Also, we'll be having a Biggles competition, so stand by with a pen and paper. But first, well, now for the Biggles, the intrepid pilot. He was a character created by the author and pilot W.E. Johns. And this was just some of his adventures. From 1920 to 1968, Captain Johns, who was a pilot, just like Biggles is in the books, wrote 98 Biggles stories. Altogether, 100 million Biggles books have been sold in 20 different countries. They've been translated into 12 different languages, and Biggles and his gang, Algie, Bertie, and Ginger, are famous the world over. But until last year, there hadn't been a Biggles film, and I went to watch one being made in March 1985, but it's taken all this time to get ready. It's an entirely new story, not one by Captain W.E. Johns, but it does show all the old familiar characters. And Biggles goes through a time warp, too, so he's zapped backwards and forwards from 1917 to 1986. Some of the most spectacular sequences are the flying scenes, when First World War air ace Biggles does battle with his arch-enemy, Baron von Stahlheim. This dogfight wasn't over France 70 years ago, but over the English Midlands in 1985. Far from being a deadly combat, the planes were twisting and diving just for the cameras. It's one of the scenes from Biggles I saw when the film was being made exactly a year ago. In real life, this is Holdenby House, a stately home in Northamptonshire. But for the Biggles film, it's playing the part of a convent. And it isn't Northamptonshire either, but behind enemy lines in war-torn Belgium. And the date is 1917. Stay down, sir, till we've not finished yet. That was just one take of one scene. It was repeated so it could be filmed from different angles. And while last-minute alterations were made to the script in a makeshift outdoor office, actors, their doubles and extras relaxed in the graveyard. Local villagers around Holdenby House were in demand last spring as Belgian nuns and casualties of the Great War raging around them. It's amazing how just a few costumes and some makeup can create 1917 in the 1980s. If you're familiar with the Biggles stories, you'll know that wherever he is, his faithful friends Ginger, the Honourable Algernon Lacey and Lord Bertie Lissy are never far behind. I met them all during a lull in the acting. Good morning. Sequency waiting to do. Rescue some people. Rescue some nuns and some... halfway through it. Is that the sort of thing you spend a lot of your time doing? Yes, we do. In this yeah, film? do a lot of time being extremely brave and very gritty. Are you like the characters that you play? Yes. In some ways, yes. But they all treat me right. like him. He looks right. Right. Yeah. A bit of a buffoon, really, it's, Ginger. It's stupid, isn't it? Pack horse, really. <laughs> Carries everything for us. Do you think the story is going to appeal to a modern-day audience? But yes, it's an interesting framework to sort of do great adventurous films and kind of... Mm. But they're set over a nice period of time with things like yeah. biplanes hovering around. Nice costumes. Guns. There are plenty of guns, and Ginger and Co. use theirs in this scene, the finished version of the one I watched being made, when the three friends casually stroll into a convent full of enemy troops. I say, would you chaps consider surrendering? So we're not finished yet. <laughs> but this German soldier seemed friendly enough, and away from the cameras, Algy dozed in the sun instead of dodging bullets. A feature film like this takes ages to make, and during a break, I spoke to Biggles himself, alias actor Neil Dixon, to ask him what it's like playing a hero. Well, it is a little bit. It started off to be daunting, but um, 
people wonder who W.E. Johns based the Biggles on. And it was a sort of amalgamation of several pilots. A lot of it was Johns himself, wasn't it? A lot of it was Johns himself, but particularly um, Albert Ball, who was a, a, a young pilot who was dashing and um, scored an enormous number of uh, heroic successes in the air. The Biggles books have quite an old-fashioned feel about them, don't they? And they stand for a lot of rather old-fashioned oh. things. Do you think they're going to appeal to a modern audience? We, we, we're telling the story in such a way that it'll appeal to, to, to the children who've seen gremlins and ghostbusters and raiders, and um, will also appeal to the, to, the, to the parents as well. By now, the crew had almost finished preparations for the big scene of the day. Let's try this one, please. As a rehearsal, please, stand by. Outside, cameras were set up to film the advancing Germans, and the cameraman checked the light while the assistant director, John O'Connor, coached the extras. Forget about him. All look up in amazement at the chopper. He suddenly starts opening fire with a machine gun. That gets them up and running. Thanks to the time warp, this is definitely the only First World War film with a helicopter. All right, sir, but we're aware of the machine gunner here. Yeah. Start getting yeah. A, a, a new position as helicopter comes over. Yeah. Everyone looks in amazement until it starts yeah. to open up fire, then they scatter. Then they scatter. And we'll get... I found out some more information from Biggles himself. We're filming with a helicopter, which, as we describe in our story, looks rather like a flying windmill. The time warp whisks Biggles to the 1980s. That's where his time twin, Jim Ferguson, comes from. And it's where Biggles first sets eyes on the flying windmill. What an ingenious contraption! What are you doing? What do you think you're doing? We better get out of here before they see us. Wait a minute, you're not seriously going to try to fly this thing, are you? You don't know how! If you can fly a sock with camel, you can fly anything. Stay where you are! a taste of how the helicopter fits into the story. It certainly creates quite a stir back in 1917. For the big scene I saw filmed, the chopper's back in time, with Biggles coming to the rescue of his friends. Controls of the chopper, or piloting his trusty Sopwith camel, you can rely on Biggles. Even with his hands full and dodging bullets now and in the past, you can bet that being the hero he is, Biggles will come out on top. <laughs> oh, it quite takes your breath away, that, doesn't yeah. it? And if you weren't quite sure what was going on there, and I must say I wouldn't blame you, you'll we'll have to wait and see the whole film, which will be in cinemas all over the country at the end of next month. But before that, Biggles, which has a PG certificate, will have a royal charity premiere on May the 22nd in the West End of London. It will be a real gala occasion with all the stars of the film there and their royal highnesses, the Prince and Princess of Wales. Mm. And you could be there if you answer just one simple question. There's a double ticket going, so it means two people can come to London. And if you long, live along the way, 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 you can stay overnight. And it'll be all expenses paid and you end up going to the premiere. 
and 50 runners up will receive a double ticket so that they can go and see Biggles at their local cinemas. And here's the book of the film that they'll also win with their tickets. Now, the question we want you to answer is, when did the First World War end? But we want to know the time of day as well as the month of the year. So that's what time, on what day, in which month, of what year did the First World War end? Send your answers on a postcard like this with your answer there, then your name, address and age, and this is the address to send it to. Biggles, Blue Peter, BBC TV Centre, London W12 8QT. 